Alright, so I'm just making this video because I was asked on a previous video, the one about the price CNC THC, to make just a detailed video on the CNC's drive system and the machine overall. Um, but, so, let's see. I think the, I think the comment was aimed at the, at the tensioner system. The way this system works is you have your pivot point and your spring. The spring is compressed and pushes the bolt to the left. Um, this drives the pinion up, because you have your nut right here, so it drives the pinion up, um, keeping the tension on the rack. So if I go over here, so as you, so the spring pulls it to the left, pulls this up, which keeps the tension um, on the rack. The benefits with the system is that if you have any debris or small dust particles or, or anything that's in here, um, just the machine can ride over it and it can kind of just bounce over it versus loading the shaft with high loads if you don't have this small adjustment. Um, some things to keep in mind though is this spring has a rate of 107 pounds per inch. Uh, this is close to the 100 making the math easy. So when you have this, so when you have this distance right here from from the center of your pivot point to the center of your shaft and your center point of your pivot point to the center of this bolt from this plane, like looking straight on that distance from here to here, from here to here on this plane. If you have that distance the same, um, and the 100, it just makes the math easier because you can say, okay, I compress the spring 0.25 or a quarter of an inch. So you compress a, a quarter of an inch, you do 100 times the 0.25, and you get 25. So that's the amount of force you're you're applying on the on your um, shaft. Just makes the math easy. Another thing to keep in mind is that you want the this pivot point and your shaft to be directly aligned or parallel or directly aligned in the direction of travel. So I'll try to explain this, but say you have this down here. If you push it to the right, it's not a big deal because it'll jam it up. But if you push it to the left, it actually allows the pivot to kind of just skip across the rack. So you have no stiffness in one direction. But if you just move that up and align these, then you have stiffness in both directions. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, I actually learned this the hard way and had to redo this whole thing. If you look at my top one, they're not completely aligned. It was close enough where it works, but I had to completely redesign the, the Y axis versus on the X axis, I was able to, to keep it. But again, the same distance from here to here is the same distance from here to here. So, um, anyways, I think that's that's pretty much it for for the drive system and the tensioner. I guess I'll just go into more detail about the machine overall. Um, so I have the the six linear rails. Um, the longer ones I bought from Amazon. Um, there's you can just buy them. They're the HG, HD, HGH 20s, and they're 1500 millimeters long, which is 59 inches, which is roughly six or five feet. And then for the z-axis, I just have I just bought a long length and then cut it in half and then just used the extra two bearings I had after buying them off of Amazon. And then. On the racks, I just bought those off McMaster. They're just half inch by half inch with a pitch of 20. And then the pinion is just a uh, pitch of 20, 15 tooth. And then I do have a set screw in real life uh, right here to just keep that from slipping. And then I also, the pinion is a 3 8 diameter hole pinion. And then I just drill it out with to drill the center hole to fit the 10 millimeter shaft on the stepper motor. Um, if I go more into detail on the X-axis 
the actual x axis you can see so if you look here the way this works is you have your stripes up and down and then you have your floating head which normally just kind of sits like that resting on this and then once it goes down once you go down and then this hits so you keep moving and then this will actually trigger a limit switch and then which will just have the machine come back up so yeah that's how my floating head works just triggers limit switch nothing special nothing too crazy just another linear bearing just a mini one I bought off Amazon as well I guess so if I go back to the whole machine and look at the way I have it leveled is I have these leveling screws so they're slightly higher so you can just kind of wheel the machine around and then once you get it to the spot you want you just lower these um, this just allows you to level the machine so the water is completely flat um, for the water table and then in the ca the casters they're just regular four inch casters from Amazon um, I did have to find ones that were able to hold the weight of the machine but they're nothing special just four inch casters with brakes and then if you look at the slats I have the slats this direction because I found it easier if you put material on it just slides on versus if you put them on from the left say the slats are rotated 90 degrees it would just kinda skip across and you'd have to lift it over all of these slats versus this just kinda slides right on um, then if we actually go into the water table and I hide all these slats you can see that the frame is just unistrut. I have this piece here to raise them up so I have give, gives me more depth. So I have I think it's three inches total depth. Um, and then these slots were just uh, cut with a with an eighth inch blade from a, um, an abrasive chop saw. So that makes it just quick. You can just go one, two, just easy to fabricate. The one problem with this system though or this design is that when you bend the slats they want to be they want to go back to a straight so there's a lot of force pushing them out and the unistrut in the center isn't stiff enough so you get this arcing motion on the unistrut and the distance becomes longer so the slats actually become straight in the center and then are still arced in the um, on the sides. Uh, one way to just fix this would be add some stiffener beam or piece that goes across. It would be an easy fix. So, but yeah, definitely if I re redesigned it, I would add that. Um, that's basically it. So yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section. I'll respond there. Anyways, thanks for watching. See ya.